For all practical purposes, for you know, C, C++, and most practical programming languages, they have two different types of loops. I will actually change the order of these loops in the presentation. I will start with a while loop, okay? And instead of you know, just reading through the text here, which you should have read already, I'm gonna go with a picture. This is what a while loop looks like. A while loop is also called a pre-checking loop because the condition is evaluated before you perform the action. In this case, the pre-checking loop is asking the question one is not full, okay? Is that person still hungry, okay? The answer is either true or false. If the answer is true, then it will go through here and perform the action of the loop. In this case, the action is take another byte. If the answer to this question is false, it will take this bypass he path here and go all the way out of the loop. Now, after performing the action here, there's no choice. There are no choice here except to go all the way around and then arrive to this point again where the question will be asked again and then depending on the answer, it will go to either direction. So this is how a loop you know, can stay repetitive because it can basically go through here, go back to the origin, and the answer to this question remains to be true. Then you have to perform another iteration and then you go back to the beginning of the loop, you ask this question again, and you keep doing this until the answer to this question is false. And that's the nature of a pre-checking loop. In this picture here, what if someone you know, comes to this loop here um, already you know, filled to the brim? It still has to go right to the false. Yep, exactly, because the first time the answer is questioned, if the, the question is answered, the answer is false already. So in this case, it is possible not to take a bite at all because you know, the condition or the question is asked first. Are we doing okay so far in terms of the concept? Okay. The syntax is really quite simple, but it can be very misleading. The syntax of a pre-checking loop looks like this. While and then a condition do, an action, and an end while. It looks a little bit like a loop. Uh, excuse me, it looks a little bit like a conditional statement without the else, but it is entirely different in terms of the behavior. Let's go ahead and you know, try out you know, some examples. I'll finish this one first. So I'll save it as if no else. Okay, this one has you know, no else branch. And then we'll close this. <coughs> again. All right. So this time I'll start with something like this. I will initialize x to 0. I will say while x is less than 3, do x gets x plus 1. And while, and this is my sample code to trace. Yep, go ahead. Uh, can you, uh, did you pass around the row sheet? Row sheet is here. Okay, so I'll start passing it now. All right, so this is my, you know, my pseudocode. I want to trace my pseudocode to find out what it is going to do. On sheet two, now because I have a condition to evaluate on line two, I need this column, comments. I have one column for line number, one column for my variable x. In this particular case, I don't really need any specific value in x because whatever value I have in x um, in the precondition, the first line of the program, line one, is going to overwrite it with a zero. So it really doesn't matter whether I start with a particular value or just unknown. So in that case, you know, it's just okay to say, you know, let's start with an unknown value because I don't need anything known to make this algorithm work. <coughs> That's my precondition. On line one, as I said a little bit earlier, all it does is to change x to 0, okay, so we know how to do that. On line 2, just like with a conditional statement, we have to answer the question, x is less than 3 is true or false? x is 0, 0 is less than 3 is true. Okay. okay, now the question is, what do we do next? Well, instead of trying to memorize everything, we can go to the picture and say, oh, okay, if the answer to this question, to the condition, is true, 
we perform an iteration. We perform the statement inside the loop. Okay, let's go back to the spreadsheet and do that. So that means in this case we have to move on to line three. Line three is going to add one to the current value of x. x is zero, zero plus one is one, and then we store one back into x, so x is now one, and then what do we do next? Okay, we go back to line two. Okay, very good. Because according to this picture, after we perform the action, we have to go all the way back to just before, just uh, the line where we asked the question again. So when you compare that to the pseudocode, that means you know, line two, because on line two we asked the question, is it true or is it false that x is less than three? So we have to go back to line two, and then whenever we get to line two, we have to reevaluate the condition. X is less than three is still true because one is less than three. Then we go to line three, we update x, so x goes from one to two. We go back to line two again. X is less than three is true for the last time. And then we go to line three, x is now going from two to three. We go back to line two, x is less than three is finally false. And then where do we go? In this case, it's post because we don't have anything after line four. So this is how a loop works, a pre-checking loop work. Okay, this is one you know, test case. So we'll go, we'll save the program. We'll just call that, you know, simple while. Okay, go ahead. Now could you put like a while loop inside a, a like a conditional statement saying Absolutely. Like, you know, if x is less than one, then add x plus one and yep. then okay. You can you can nest conditional statements and loops any way you want. All right. Yep. All right, so this is one program. I'm going to save the file as a different one. So I would say, I'll call this one no action because of the precondition. So instead of initializing x to zero, I'll initialize it to three to begin with. And then we go to for the trace, and I'll just go ahead and erase everything here so we can start from scratch. On line one, I overwrite the value of x so it, it becomes three. On line two, I evaluate the condition. X is less than three is false, and then where do we go? We go to post right away. Yep. So this illustrates it is possible for a pre-checking loop to skip the action specified in the loop altogether because we are asking the question first. We are, we are not performing the action first, we are asking the question first and therefore we can escape the action altogether. Any questions about this? No question? All right. to save this file and then we'll talk about post checking loop. Most of the time if you you know if there is a term called pre blah 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 that's usually a term you know, post blah blah blah. Okay? In this case the post checking loop is called a repeat until loop. It really is kind of specific to this class. You know, C has a do while loop instead of a repeat until loop. But the nature is about the same except the condition is flipped. So we'll go ahead and just take a look at this. And the syntax looks like this. We begin with the reserved word repeat. We perform, we specify the action to perform, you know, that may be performed repetitively. And then we specify until and then a condition to get out of the loop. This condition to get out of a loop is usually called also an exit condition because it exits a loop. Okay. All right, so this is about the same logic. Repeat, take a bite until one is full, until a person does not feel hungry anymore. And the picture is in the next slide. It looks kind of like this. You're coming in here. Now this looks like a junction, but it, there's no decision to be made at this point because you can see that these arrows are both pointing in. So that means you know you cannot take this branch and say, oh, I'm gonna out, I'm, I'm gonna get out from this point. No, you have to, you have no choice but to perform the action once. And then at this point, you can decide whether 
you, you can answer, the, under, answer this question. If the answer to the question is false, then you have to go back and then perform the action again. If the answer to the question is true, then you get out of the entire loop. Are there any questions about this picture? I have one. Sorry, go ahead. Um, what, what sort of circumstances is it, is it advantageous to have this kind of uh, like post -check? structure? Uh -huh. um, I'll, we'll talk about that. Okay, we'll definitely mm -hmm. talk about it. Now, in this case, you know, does it make sense to use the previous version or use this version here? In terms of you know having someone to take a bite, the previous version. The previous version, right? Because if I just come back, you know, from a buffet, and I'm already full, and I encounter this logic here, I don't have a choice. I'm gonna take another bite first, and then I would have a choice to not to take yet another bite. But that's not really you know the the, the right logic, right? Because if I'm not feeling hungry, I should have a way to bypass taking a bite altogether. So that means the previous logic works better in this particular scenario. Okay. We'll trace a program and then what's that? All right. So this time we'll start with you know, x again. Yeah. Let's start, this time let's go backwards. Okay. So we say x gets four. We say repeat x gets x minus 1 until x, uh, not just x equals 2. Okay, that's okay in this case. I'm setting this up, you know, for a kind of tricky situation. All right, so this is my pseudocode. It's my program. I'm going to trace it next, find out what's going to happen when I execute a program. I have a condition to evaluate, so I need one column to indicate the result of the evaluation of the conditions. We have line number, a single variable, kind of like last time. Um, I have a precondition. Once again, you know, I don't really need to know anything about x because the first line of this program is going to overwrite the value of x already. I start with line one. Line one is going to overwrite x to a value of four. And then I don't track line two, okay? I skip all the way to line three. The reason why I don't skip, I skip line two is because line two doesn't do anything. You know, all line two is doing is to indicate the beginning part of the loop. It doesn't have a condition to evaluate. It doesn't do anything. So as a result, I don't track line two at all. Okay, I just start with the inside of the loop. Remember, this is a post-checking loop. I don't have a choice but to perform the action first. In this case, the action on line three is going to decrease the value of x by one. So x will go from four to three. After the action, finally, I got a chance to answer this question. The question is, x equals two, is it true or is it false? It's false because x now has a value of three. So according to the picture, we have to go back to the beginning. Let me just show you the picture again. If the condition evaluates to false, I have to go back to the beginning and perform another iteration. <coughs> so in this case, you know, in this loop, I have no choice but to go back to line. Oops, I, sorry here. <laughs> That's line four, performing the uh, evaluation 